How do you feel better in the middle of a difficult situation? Hi, I'm Kirsten D. Samuel. Today, I'll share with you my three-step method to process through difficult situations. This method helps me regain some equilibrium, and I hope it will help you too. When you feel overwhelmed, frustrated, out of control, or afraid, taking the time to ask yourself these three questions stops the spin cycle. Can I be honest with you? I don't think we're honest. The other day, a colleague and friend asked me if I could adjust my schedule to accommodate an extra activity. Well, on the phone with her, I started to check my schedule. And she said, be honest. She knew my first desire would be to help her and I might complicate my day just to do so. Well, everything within me wanted to agree to this extra activity, but I couldn't. As I hemmed and hawed, my friend again asked me to be honest. We're so afraid of honesty that we slide around the truth, believing we're protecting ourselves or the other person. But that's not true. So we tell little white lies or we lie to ourselves. You know them. They've been used against you and you've even used them. Well, let me propose something here. The enemy of our souls uses the little white lie tactic on us continually. This one degree off the truth just enough believability to trick us into succumbing to the deception. It's not a new tactic, but one he's used since the beginning of time and quite successfully. Unfortunately, these one degree off truth lies get us into trouble time and time again. Every time we do not speak the truth to one another, we damage our integrity, wound our souls and compromise our values. Learning to speak truth in all situations takes practice. Often we take one tiny step forward followed by a couple or several large steps backward. As humans, this is part of our struggle, so don't beat yourself up. Today, it's time to trust yourself enough to be honest in the big and the small. So let's start here. First, get honest with yourself. Learning honesty starts with yourself. How can you be honest with others when you don't confront your own issues? You can't. I can't, but often the hardest place to practice honesty is within. When was the last time you stopped long enough to look at the person in the mirror and hold a frank conversation? Now, frank talk about your reality is not the same as negative self-talk. Taking the time to accurately and objectively assess your current status allows you to take the necessary steps toward developing integrity. And these assessments free you to become who you desire to be. Let's go after that freedom. Number two, heal your wounds. The time and investment in you yields benefits beyond your imagination. I remember when I first heard the diagnosis suicidal depression. It ripped open my soul and destroyed my belief system. How, how could someone who believed in God be suicidally depressed? That didn't make sense to me. However, I had to stare that wound deep in the face to find the road to recovery. I couldn't do it alone, which meant I invested time and resources to get the help I needed. Not only was I a woman dealing with the aftershocks from discovering her husband's porn addiction, I also suffered from this other mental illness. It was a double whammy, but getting help was the best decision I made. Number three, know what you believe so you can trust yourself. Living in duplicity, however minor or major, depletes you on every level. Decisions are draining, especially when you're not entirely certain what you believe. Your, wounds, your words and actions aren't entirely truthful because they aren't rooted. Do you remember the Aesop fable about the boy who cried wolf? Well, just like every parable or fable, there's a nugget of truth tucked into a relatable story. When the boy actually did see the wolf and his life was in danger, no one believed him because of the lies he told multiple times. The boy erroneously thought those little white lies were harmless, but he destroyed his integrity and the townspeople labeled him as untrustworthy. If you want to be trustworthy, your words and actions must be truthful. It's that simple and difficult. No one ever does it perfectly. Not even people we view as saintly, such as Mother Teresa. The Bible tells us to let our yes be yes and our no be no. Anything beyond that damages who we are and reflects poorly on our values. 
So let's go back to that, those three questions and how do we apply this level of honesty to every situation? While this following exercise appears simple, it requires gut level truth and facing facts, but it helps you to get honest with yourself. So step one, grab a piece of paper or open a blank document on your computer. Now on that document, make three columns and label them control, no control, let go. Two, think about a particular situation you're struggling with and write down your thoughts regarding it under these three categories. Okay, you gotta be honest here. You can look at your life too, but focusing on something more general makes this exercise a little bit more difficult. Number three is the key. The only column you can do anything about is the control column. And if you've been honest, it's a pretty short list. Number four, look at everything in the no control and let go columns. Allow yourself permission to turn your back on everything in those columns. Yes, you let each item go. You mentally and emotionally toss them away because you have no impact on them. Number five, for those things on the control list, Identify your next step. If you can't identify a next step, then consider that that item might need to move to one of the other columns. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say you feel frustrated because you think you're the only wife whose husband doesn't meet all your, her needs. Control. What can you control? Your thoughts, the other women who speak into your life, and your role in your relationship with your husband. Number two is no control. What can't you control? Well, your husband and how others may view your marriage. Number three is let go. What do you need to let go of? His performance, your image with other wives. You can't control how they view you. Some rom-com movie ideal of the perfect husband, his past mistakes, your past mistakes, worries about the future, false expectations. Do you see how an objective look at an idea that felt so giant and scary could help? It doesn't solve the issue other than it does present the difficult situation in a way that you can begin to move forward. You can objectively look at it and let go of those things you can't affect. Well, the beauty of this exercise is you can do it on any and every situation. So where are you today? What are you attempting to control that belongs in the no control or let go column? I hope you'll take a time today to spend a few minutes tackling just one situation where you've bought the little white lie. Look at it, assess it, and then try this exercise. See what you discover. If you need help processing through a difficult situation, hop on over to kirstendsamuel.com and click the blue button. Let's talk.